During our last episode, we hauled out our boat at the Harbor Town Marina for rudder tube fixes on both sides of our boat. We also had our sail drives evaluated by Just Catamaran's engine specialist, where he found a bad clutch in our port engine. How's it feel? That one's slipping. Is it slipping? Yeah. So this one, you can oh. turn it against. Okay. Yep. So the clutch is slipping. Join us today as Just Cats fixes a major design flaw in Fountain Peugeot's steering system and continue to fix our port sail drive issue. Also, a special segment from Franny as she fixes the throttle cables. Today's a big day. We're going to be working on the engine, or more specifically, the sail drive. So this is the port engine bay, and our sail drive clutch is slipping in forward, and it's also difficult to get out of reverse. So I'm going to have Chad from Jess Catamarans come down today, and we're going to move this engine forward, decouple it from the sail drive, and he's going to pull the whole transmission bit out of that. It's two clutches, one for forward, one for reverse. They're multiple plate clutches. They are not the cone clutches. Then he's gonna take that whole assembly back to the shop, rebuild the whole thing, and then we're going to reinsert it in the engine, and that should solve our transmission issues on the port engine. Very excited about that. He'll be here in a few minutes, and we'll get started when he gets here. If it was an incorrect adjustment on the gear cable, if it's incorrect, it often aids it wearing fast on the clutch on one gear, be it the forward or the Roger, reverse. Yep, that makes sense. Because your shifter lever should be exactly in the middle. But if your cable doesn't meet it, then it's a bit into one. Sure. So when you pull it to the other, it um, doesn't fully engage. And it was just a slight bit out. Well, you want to okay. see here? So when you're bringing it to this side, it's not engaging all the way. And what it does is it, it starts to aid it slipping and starts doing damage. When you're trying to engage all those clutch plates at speed, you're going to get slippage. Yes. And it's a very small tolerance on that mm -hmm. to prevent it from slipping again. If you don't get it right, 250 hours and you're slipping. That's the reason why it's not really a DIY thing. Um, no, the, the better option here is in order to save yourself some money is do this part of it and then once you've got the whole input shaft with a clutch assembly on it, pack it up, send it to somebody like me. They'll yes. do that part for you, send it back. And when you bring it back, it's to make sure you're straight, make sure the gap between the sail drive and the engine down there is not like that. You've got to get it 100% even mm -hmm. in order for the shaft to go back in. And then when we put it back in, a couple of things to look at, which we'll show you then, is just the shim placement and the seal placement. Because this plate here has shims inside and the, the bearing carrier that you're putting your preload on and you've got the same in the front. Yeah. Tricky things when you're putting it back and okay. making sure the seal's in the right place. Where the seal and the input shaft sits, the shim sit right there. And when you put the cap on, it's to make sure the shim doesn't go into the seal side because the minute you run it, it pushes the seal out. What we're going to do here, remove the air box for spacing. Should we loosen up the engine mounting bolts both sides? We take those three bolts each side out and uh, we'll pick up the engine with the halyard just a little bit and then we can slide it forward off the drive. Okay. We can then drop the engine down. We remove the allen keys, take the cap off. Then we have full access to the touch, we can remove it. Okay. And that is it. And you take it away, press it, come back, put it on. All right. All right, that's it. Once again, these were the shims I was telling you to watch out when you put it back, because if it's wrong, they can, can bend in through there. There it goes. So how it works, when you shift one way, it locks. That one will be free. This one will be locked with that shaft. Mm -hmm. You shift the other way. This one will be free, that one will be locked with the shaft. So but it's as not necessarily forward and reverse, it's counterclockwise and clockwise because you could have a right hand propeller oh, on the other side. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yep, forward yep. or reverse. Yep. And as, as we tested before, the forward slips on this. The forward slips on this. Yes. You see the amount of play in that plate? 
See those gaps I'm creating? Yes. Maybe you see it easier here. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's excessive. That's excessive, okay. So that means these plates are worn and this was probably your forward gear. How bad? See yeah. how bad the other one is? No, not, not as bad, but you've still got excessive play, so it was on its way. Okay. Well, great. Well, we'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah. How was the transmission after all? The plates were very warm. Eh? Were they? Yeah. Which is pretty much what we expected. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see this actually work properly. Wait, Mark. Okay. Okay, go. Up. Up. Is that good? Yep, that's good. Okay, so what I've done here is I've actually, I'm on the forward gear, in gear. Okay. Um, like I said to you, it's easier that way to put it on. Sure. Because as we put the cap on, you can get a visual that you're going correctly into it. Okay. And then what I usually do, once we get that cap on, the two front bolts, the two back bolts, get them down, get them tight. And then we'll just run it through the gears before we go and start putting everything. Just make sure it's good. As long as you've got the front and the back, should you're be. holding everything tight, you're good. All we want to do, just make sure those arms are in where it should be and it's flowing for you. adjustment on the cable because ah, we yes. are a couple of turns out okay so another thing to do is just up at the throttles just give a little wiggle make sure it's nicely in neutral okay and then uh, we do that adjustment here so mark just double check there so you just want it in its natural state to be in the middle The other thing people do wrong when they check the cell drive oil is you don't want to screw it in. These are made to just dip. Okay. And then you're good. So you just push it in the top and then check it. Yeah. You only screw it in when you're You only done. screw it in when you're on the money. Okay. Ready? Yep, fire away. I wondered that actually. I thought so. That sounded high to me. Yeah, as soon as we went back to neutral, we could hear it pick up a spear high. Okay. Okay. All right. And that is that. And that's that. A project I want to tackle for today are the throttle linkages. They're just really tight and binding a little bit, so I've got all brand new parts and we're going to have to rebuild them and swap them out. When I started this project, what I did was to pull this all apart, clean it completely, but the threaded rod on this side, the stud, was completely stripped. I mean, it's almost smooth. It's so bad. So I just put it back together, sort of wire tied it together just so it wouldn't come apart. And I didn't know if we'd need to move the boat or not, so I wanted to just make sure that we were good. Now what I want to do is take it all back off again and we'll rebuild this block. I've got my safety wire off here. There we go. Cut that off. And this is how bad that is. Look how, that's just, I can just spin this. That's how bad that shaft actually is. 
really bad. I'm going to pull it off. Just need to release this. There we go. There it goes. All right. You can see the bad threads there. Yeah, they're just there's just no thread there at all. Almost nothing at all. We'll take this back to the table and go ahead and rebuild it with the new parts. This is the original assembly here. It's comprised of all these parts here, completely stripped non-existent threads. And if that had popped off during docking or something, that could have been very, very bad. I'm glad to be replacing this part, but it gives us a visual of how our parts need to go back together. We'll start with this shaft here. And just put a little grease on it, just like that. It's a bit much. There we go. Just slide that guy through. So that's lubricated. That'll help it to keep from corroding in the future as well. Then next is our spring. So next is our little circlip. And you can see how it's oriented here, that it should be like that as we put it on. So we'll just press it on this way. That spring's a little tight. I've got a little socket here. This is a 10 millimeter, trusty dusty 10 millimeter. Fits on that perfectly. Put this over the shaft here, like that. There it goes. That's the snap I was looking for. Like I moves in and out really nicely. That's great. We are all set to reassemble this. If you're looking for this part in the parts catalog, it's actually called a cube. It's a strange name, but that's what it's called. And it used to be sold as a complete kit that looks like this, and it's not anymore. It's it's in all those little bits that we just assembled. Now Importantly, this washer and nut did not come with a kit, nor did this little shoulder washer here either. This didn't, and we need these two parts here. So we need this guy and we need that nut and washer. So I replaced the nut and washer with just a new piece. And this little shoulder washer I just cleaned up, it was fine. But before we install it, I wanna show you something. Take a look at this. So this is our throttle linkage here. And it really should come back with some real authority and you can kind of see it kind of doesn't. I mean, it can sit a bit off of idle, especially if there's any stickiness at all in the in this cable. Yeah, this may not come back all the way. And that was causing us some real grief. So I talked to some people about this and what they said to do was to loosen this up down here. So we've got a, a 10 millimeter here that's got that's clamping this guy on and then just move it out just a bit because it's a little hard to see in there but there's a bit of corrosion right where it that shaft is and right where this throttle linkage arm is attached and that gets kind of gummed up in there and that's what we're going to do is just move this guy out a little bit so there's a little more room it's not quite so tight on there and we'll clean out that gap and lubricate it a little bit and hopefully this will spring back a little more authority this is up here yeah, there we go. Just a little. We don't need to move much. Just to get a little more gap here. That's all we're looking for. There we go. Now we've got some gap. That's good. Let's go ahead and tighten this back down. I don't want to lose the adjustment. Okay, there we go. Alright, so our gap. It's very subtle. Just a little more gap in there so that it moves a little easier. And hit it with a little bit of uh, corrosion X here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that feels really good actually. That feels better, less bindage. So when we're at idle, then we want to make sure that this is all the way on the idle stop. And that's what I think is not happening. Let's go ahead and reinstall our little throttle linkage cube in place. We'll have to make sure we put our shoulder washer in. Don't want to forget that guy there. A little corrosion X on the shaft here as well to lubricate it. All right. Push that through. Cool. And just our nut and washer here. Doesn't need to be super tight. Just that's good. Just needs to not come off. You know, for the idle, I think I'd like to see this actually a little bit compressed to make darn sure we get to idle every time. I'm not happy with that adjustment. Tighten this guy up. And I think we're going to be good. Gives us a little sp spring action. We'll bring us back to idle. Yeah, that looks good. I'm loving that. That's the throttle linkage replaced and adjusted. 
several months ago, when we were looking at this boat for the very first time, Franny did notice that the steering seemed rather loose, and she did mention it to our broker, as well as our inspector. I wonder if that should not be moving up and down. I wonder if that, or if it's supposed to be. They look, they've got, well, they did have yellow paint on them, which means they were torqued. And then these don't. So somebody's had this off. Especially with a system like this. If you had rose joints, you'd expect it to all be tight. So <clears throat> what I was talking about with this tiller that I saw was you grab hold of this rod. There's a lot of play in that. Right. It seems like a lot of play. I don't know if that's normal or not. Uh, I mean, there is some play in the system. So what happens, I don't know if you can see, but it's it's through bolted. Yeah, I saw that there. back there. That, that can actually get, t get tightened up. But it's not, it's not going anywhere. Okay. All right. Yeah, so one of the main reasons is you can see this is moving. Yeah. Um, is that, that's that's that supposed, loose. Is that supposed to be? No. No. So it should be sitting like this. They do move just because of, you see how this doesn't hold the most best angle. This doesn't hold yeah, the best angle. Sucks. Um, I do space these up. Okay. I have spaces I can put in. So I actually, um, I designed them perfectly. They, um, we actually cut this bar down. Yes. So they end up yep. where they're they supposed to be. To. Mm -hmm. But I have custom aluminum spacers, uh, five eighths and up. Because each boat's a little bit different. Sure, sure. So we'll basically just make it okay. work for what we need to. But it's all situation. good and tight when it's all done, right? Oh yeah, of course. But as far as the slot for the actual bar going across, you're just going to notice less noise and less of a, it's just going to be a tighter feeling basically. So I think it'll be a good option for you. The stock steering bar from Fountain Peugeot is just awful. Most other manufacturers use a Heim or Rose joint for a slop-free connection. You remember Colt at Just Cats from our last video. He's going to walk us through the solution they developed to modify the FP steering arm to install a Heim joint. This is a great bit of kit. The piece is milled out of solid stainless steel and has a heavy-duty Heim joint threaded into the end. Installation requires removing the end of the stock rudder tube Insertion of the new part into the tube and attaching with two large bolts Since the new part is stainless steel and the rudder bar is aluminum, it is critical that tough gel is used to coat the mating surface. This will stop any galvanic corrosion between the two. With the new Heim joint installed, it is connected to the rudder tiller arm with a substantially larger through bolt, increasing the strength of the connection considerably. This also allows independent adjustment of the two rudders for the first time. This is an essential upgrade to any Fountain Peugeot. Highly recommended. This uh, Heim joint, it's self-lubricating. You don't have to worry about uh, lubricating it at all. Okay. Um, it would be beneficial to just spray down with corrosion next to the whole assembly every now and again while you're in here. Right on. Okay, good. That's great to know just from a maintenance standpoint. And, uh, and the large 5 8 bolt, um, I just check it every now and often um, while you're in the engine room just to make sure that it stays tight and all that. So it's going to be washer, heim joint, washer, spacer, the rest of the washers depending on how many we need to space up off of here but we'll just assemble it like this. We don't know until we get the other side, the other rudder in. And that'll give you your spacing here, right? And then it's gonna be that plate, uh, one of these washers and then the bolt. And on the old assembly, the, the plate moves underneath it. But on this, in this thing, it's all gonna be locked down. So there's no need for that plate to move, is there? There's not really a need. It, it doesn't really matter either way based on how the cables are pulling on the plate. We usually tighten it down to where it does not move, but it will, you loosen over time and it'll move a little bit. And it doesn't really make a difference at this point because it's okay. just the cables pulling in either direction. We just wanna have it tight enough to where we limit this movement. Obviously, once the nut is on there, that'll go away. And that's what the wear on the old assembly starts from having that movement in there. Okay, that's what wallows out the holes. Exactly. Yep. All right, well, let's take a look at this. This is the way it turns out, and it was really well installed. You can see the end 
of the plug there is completely flush with the end of the tube. That's great. It also provides an enormous amount of rigidity right there, which is great because that's where that force is going to be applied into the tube. So that's a great thing. The hardware here is insane. Look at the size of this stuff. It's just ginormous. Now I'll coat all of this with 303 just to make sure that we don't have any you know, rust issues or anything. These hind joints are just really nice quality. Look at that. And now it sort of looks the part, doesn't it? Look at the look at the hind joint there for the ram. That's ginormous as well. And now we have this. Looks killer. We hope you enjoyed the video. Join us next week when Franny installs another much needed upgrade and rebuilds our wobbly windlass after waiting for parts for three months. Until then, safe travels. Bye.